Yes, we're here. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Paul Roland. Uh, I am, uh, until today, I think, the president of the Plum Foundation. We'll say a little bit about that later in the presentation. And um, I'm doing this together with Eric. Eric is still fiddling with his computer, as he is known to do. And Eric is uh, the release manager. S shall we? Yeah. Just, <clears throat> well, first of all, everybody really welcome to Brasilia, Brazil. It's great to be here um, because this is the first time that we have a plan conference south of the equator, uh, which is in itself amazing. We are having, we're expanding beyond our traditional reaches and not only is it south of the equator, um, this talk is actually named the state of Plone. Can we get the next one? And it has never been more aptly titled. It's been called the state of Plone for the past 10 years, but I think Brazil is more or less the state of Plone now. Uh, only a few days ago, the president of Brazil, <coughs> Jim Rousseff, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, uh, opened the new Brazil Gov BR portal. But that is not all. We have so many people here, I can't name you all, but um, we have Serpro, which is a huge, huge, huge uh, organization um, who run many, many plant sites. Uh, Giuseppe Romagnoli is, for instance, for them. We have Interleges, um, who is also, who are maintaining a lot, a lot, a lot of sites. I want to name Jean Ferry and Marcio Mazza, one of the organizers of this campaign. Um, also, there are many sites, for instance, in the electoral justice system, which has it, uh, a federal one and 27 regional ones and who are running an amazing amount of plowing sites. Also, the Brazilian presidency. Um, Cynthia Cinquini, I hope I didn't butcher that name also, is one of the key people there and they are running over 50 plowing sites. And then there is a, these people are not operating in an island. Um, there is something called Plown Golf Brazil, which is a community and was the winner of last year's Plone Awards and who are the organizers of this fabulous conference. Um, Tanya Andrea and Rafaela Bazanella spring to mind. And so, yes, I can truly say we are in the state of Plown. Okay, I'll do this one as well. Um, yes, yeah, some words about the Plone Foundation. Uh, Plone has a foundation, the Plone Foundation. It exists to promote and to protect Plone, to promote in ways um, to further the interest to spread ourselves to world domination and to protect ourselves in all kinds of legal battles that we might be in. Um, we have, the foundation is based on membership. There's about 125, give or take, active members at the moment. And last year saw seven new members being admitted to the foundation, um, which is great. And we're going to have a membership meeting tonight at 6 p.m. Um, everybody is welcome there. Members are the only ones that are allowed to vote, but everybody is more than welcome to sit and watch. Okay. Uh, one of the things we've tried to do this year is um, really build up the uh, non-code portions of the community. Uh, so we have a number of teams, I believe 12 now, uh, that are helping to support Plone the software and Plone the community. Um, so we've been meeting uh, monthly or bi-monthly as we remember to get around to it. Um, uh, to kind of get our heads together uh, to talk about what issues we're facing so that we can make sure that each team is helping the other teams as, uh, as we need to. So um, there is now a team, although it's still in a bit of disarray, for accessibility. 
Plone takes accessibility very serious. There have been special sprints on it at uh, Plone, uh, at Oshkosh, Wisconsin, at Plone Symposium Midwest, it was called, and also in Rosario, Argentina. And we are planning to do a lot more work on accessibility, not only for the people visiting a site, but uh, maybe even more important also for people who are creating sites so that uh, people with different abilities will be able to create content just as well as anybody else. That's the plan for the future and we're going to stick to it. And we should mention that Paul is leading up that team. Okay. Uh, we have a user interface team now um, that was led by Nathan Van Geem up until a few weeks ago and now Dylan Jay has taken that over. Uh, and they've been taking on revamping Plone's user interface, um, hence the name. Uh, one of the main things they've been working on is the UI hit list. So they're looking through Plone uh, and finding where the pain points are for, for new users, for integrators, uh, and trying to fix as many things as possible uh, as we move into the next release of Plone. Anything else we should say about that? Okay, yeah. The next team is the security team who will also have been active. I cannot name who is in there because then you would have to be shot because they are very secret. But um, they are uh, improving Plone security in a more and more organized way. It is, I think, a first that we now have PLIPs coming from the security team to be secure by default uh, for cross-site uh, 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 scripting attacks. and. One announcement that is probably going to make uh, a lot of lives easier is that Plone, from now on, will have timed uh, bug fix releases. There will be three releases a year that will have um, upgra security upgrades, if there are any, but usually there are, but they are timed so that you can plan your deployments. Obviously, if something really serious out there in the wild happens, you will still have to patch in between, but we've never had that for the past couple of years. And um, the first of those release days will be Tuesday, December the 8th. And then it'll be more or less every four months. Uh, and always on a Tuesday because everybody seems to be patching on a Tuesday. Uh, so we decided to go with the flow. I'm going to let you talk about marketing. I don't want <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, Plone marketing has always been one not of our especially strong points. Uh, there have been many reboots, but we are slowly tackling the tension. There is definitely a tension between traditional marketing and an open source community such as we are. But I think we are getting, slowly getting the hang of it. There were two well-visited events, open, ev open spaces on marketing. Uh, one was at Plone Open Garden in Italy, and the other one was again in Oshkosh at uh, Plone Symposium West. And marketing had its own, very own, dedicated sprint in um, Fortville, Indiana, which is also in the US. Um, so, and they are preparing more stuff, which will come later. Yes. Uh, this year. Oh, no, sorry, one announcement. There will also be an open space on marketing at this conference. Uh, I will announce the time later, but it will be probably on Thursday. Okay. Uh, we've added a communications team this year, uh, and they're really important to what we're trying to do. Uh, they are in charge of writing articles uh, for Plone.org and external sources. Uh, just to kind of help get out the information that we're, we're working with, uh, with uh, in our teams. Uh, so they'll be making reports on each of our team leader meetings uh, so that you know what's going on and you can jump in and help uh, as you uh, see areas that, that you might be able to contribute to. Um, we've added a testing and automation team um, that's headed up by Timo. Uh, they've been doing some great work um, making, making sure that the quality of Plone stays high. Um, we have a number of uh, Jenkins instances that we're running uh, to uh, check each, each uh, push to the code base uh, so it gets checked with uh, 
our unit tests, it gets checked against um, ro uh, with robot fr uh, framework to do uh, Selenium testing of the interactive features. And new, um, we can we now have more and more robot tests, and that robot tests mean also we can do automated accessibility tests. Uh, the Plone.org team is working on re rebuilding uh, Plone's website. Uh, Plone.org has been was created with Plone 1.0 and has been upgraded ever since, um, which is a wonderful uh, marketing tool, but it also uh, means there's a lot of things in there that are just old and unused. Um, so we're doing a complete rebuild of the site and uh, really working to make it more usable for everyone. Yes, uh, it's worth mentioning that Plone Arc has been, go, has been updated from version 1, and it's about time it gets a refresh. And we can see some of the mock-ups. Note they are only mock-ups. Um, we give no guarantees that the end result will look exactly the same, but more or less like this. So yeah, this would be the home page. Uh, <laughs> sorry, they're a bit washed out. Uh, that would be the uh, products page, and uh, we're working on new profile pages for our members uh, to really uh, highlight what everyone's been involved in. Um, we know we have a lot of new people coming on board uh, recently, uh, so we wanted to be able to show that, uh, basically give a resume of your Plone activity. Um, so all your code contributions, all your non-code contributions, which are just as important, so contributions to the the, uh, the documentation, uh, answering Stack Overflow questions, uh, whether or not you're a foundation donor or a sponsor. Yeah, so it's pretty hard to see, but this also lists such things as having a presentation on SlideShare or anything that helps spread our community that will be highlighted. So it's not just code that will be highlighted. We need non-code just as much. Well, administrative infrastructure, we have a team led since years by Martin, and I guess the good thing is there's never really exciting stuff to mention because it all sort of always works, which is exactly good. We will have some new machines. Uh, we will be moving to more virtual machines, but if everything works out well, the end user will not notice. That is the secret behind administrative work. Uh, we have much work in the installers team. The installers team has been quite active. Um, the installers for Plone 5 will be a bit more friendly. Uh, they will check for dependencies and there is also talk of moving uh, the whole uh, framework and uh, or sort of the code generator base a bit closer to the installer base. If you want to know more about this, there will be a talk on this this afternoon, and you can hear everything that there is to hear. Okay. Uh, and we have our internationalization team, our translation team, uh, who have just been doing amazing work. Uh, we don't hear a lot about them, uh, but they just keep plugging away. They do the work. We have all the languages, and they keep getting updated. So thank you, all the you translators out there. I don't know how many of the you there are in this audience right now, but be proud of yourself. Your work is very valuable. The documentation team, yes. Um, we have all seen a lot of uh, work in that regard, uh, led by Miko. Uh, our fierce sword-wielding fin, and we are moving more and more documentation off of Plone Org, out of the old knowledge base, into a Sphinx-based system, which is easier to maintain. Um, there will be not only developer.plone.org, which is now our main go-to place, which is increasingly misnamed because there is so much information on there already for non-integrators or for non-developers. So it will probably be moved to something like docs.plone.org. So all our documentation will be in one place, will be simple to find, it will be fi uh, searchable from the new plone.org. And yes, if you want to help, um, you're more than welcome. More documentation writers are always good. And if you're really serious about helping, there will be a sprint that is planned, for a real documentation sprint, 
So as soon as that gets finalized, mark your calendars and go there and document the hell out of everything. Uh, one of the, the, the exciting things to be happening with documentation right now is uh, something OSCO has built, uh, which has uh, basically given us the ability to uh, run uh, using Selenium uh, to generate um, screenshots for our documentation so that it's always up to date. So if something in Plone changes, we can just rerun that and make sure that all the, all the images, uh, the screenshots of Plone are exactly what you should be seeing uh, within your Plone instance. So, yeah, the whole end-user documentation will, thanks to Selenium and thanks to Asko Suka, uh, have always up-to-date screenshots, which is amazing. Okay. Um, so we've had a lot of changes in the code this year. Um, uh, something we didn't really uh, tout too much, but uh, we've added the capability to use uh, Zip replication services. Uh, so that's in core right now. Um, and it basically allows you to easily replicate your Zip database across multiple servers. Uh, there's now a pass plugin available, which uh, works with Active Directory across domains, um, and that does things that even uh, Microsoft's own SharePoint doesn't handle. Um, there were some recent discussions of uh, the number of active users on a site. Uh, there was one person who claimed uh, 75,000 active users, uh, and others that said they had even more. Um, and, uh, and Paul is uh, digging out his I cannot find it. My bag is a mess. Unfortunately, I want to show you my uh, deployment servers now, nowadays. I'll show you in the break, which they are about this size, look like a USB stick. Um, I deploy them quite often now uh, with 30 concurrent users. They cost $50 a piece. And Plone runs quite well on hardware as small as that. And on the other hand, yeah, we just had a Twitter discussion saying like, oh, I have 75,000 blocked in users, that works. Do I hold the record? And all the people saying, no, nah, I don't think so, I have more. So that's what I call scaling. All right, so we've really started talking this year about Plone 5. Um, yeah, so uh, Plone 5 is coming. We're hoping to have it within the next year, uh, before next year's conference. Uh, one of the main things is we're going to be shipping with Dexterity, uh, the content type system, as its default content type story. So uh, archetypes, which was the old, version, old uh, way of doing things, will still be around uh, so that you can use your existing content types, uh, but we'll be, um, we'll be uh, using primarily Dexterity for everything. Uh, so you'll still have archetypes, AT content types, and schema extender if you need them, but we really want to start pushing people into Dexterity. Um, it's going to provide a lot of really nice uh, upgrades for everyone. Um, we're giving Plone uh, its user interface a, a very extensive overhaul. Um, Diazo is going to become the default theming story for Plone. Uh, we'll, we'll have a new, very simplified base theme uh, without Diazo, uh, but uh, there's a new Diazo theme coming in, uh, which will be responsive, accessible, uh, very simple CSS if you want to modify it, um, but you, d you can just uh, replace that with your own Diazo theme very easily. Um, so we'll have fewer CSS files sitting around, so it'll make it much easier to edit. We won't be using important within your CSS, which should make things a lot easier. Uh, you'll be able to bring your own grid system, so you won't be tied into the Deco GS grid system that we have in Plone 4. Um, and we intend to make it entirely accessible, um, so it'll be WCAG and ATAG compliant. Um, Paul is hoping that we will be the first uh, CMS to be ATAG2 compliant. Yes, <clears throat> we're in a race with a few others, but we're, yeah, we're obviously hoping to win that race. So uh, the, uh, the UI team has been working, spending a lot of time working on rebuilding Plone's widgets, all the form fields and editing uh, tools that you use to work with Plone. Um, so this is what it'll look like. Uh, this is obviously the current theme. Uh, one of the things that you notice up top is the new toolbar. So this is going to uh, remove the green bar that everybody's been familiar with for years uh, and place it at the top of the page. Uh, this is going to allow us to uh, use Diazo on sites to do the skinning without having to worry about uh, modifying the editing uh, styles of the site. Uh, so it'll set, it'll set completely completely on top of your existing site uh, without uh, 
conflicting with, with your, the styles you apply to it. Uh, so here you can see new widget for related items, which allows you to search, uh, filter through the site, uh, new date widget. What else? And note this is all done in that overlay, so you can have a completely crazy green with uh, purple layouts, but you will still be able to right. reliably work your content. Right, and your page can be 50 pixels wide and you'll still be able to edit, edit things. Uh, so we moved everything into overlays here. Uh, there's a new, f there's also a new folder contents view. Oops, wait, oh, I missed it. All right, well, we'll have to skip that. There is a new folder contents view as well. Um, that will allow filtering batch operations. Uh, it's very fantastic. Um, yeah. This is new, this is Tiny MCE four, uh, which we've uh, incorporated, uh, which is really an improvement both for accessibility but also for general keeping your mind sane. Um, we're aiming also to keep that integration of Tiny MCE as lightweight as possible, meaning we will not be as behind as we have been. We can keep up with the current versions of Tiny MCE, and you will be very easily able to plug in a variety of really useful Tiny MCE plugins that are out there. Uh, we won't butcher it till it doesn't look like Tiny MCE anymore. It will look just as it comes, which is just a lot friendlier to upgrade and also to have those useful uh, plugins. Uh, and as you'll see right here, it also has drag and drop upload for images and files. So I can drag things right off my desktop and insert them into the content. Uh, it uploads them to the site beautifully. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so all our widgets are available online uh, as just a basic HTML file. If you want to try them out uh, before we merge them into core, uh, if you go to this address, you'll be able to get to them. Uh, these will be usable in Plone 4.3. Uh, <laughs> Rock has promised me that we will have a release by the end of the conference, um, and uh, he's also promised not to drink any more Caparinas until that's done. <laughs> so. That is commitment. That is commitment, Rock. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> or didn't you say that? I'm sorry. Did I mishear it? <laughs> <laughs> Only whiskey. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. These will be available for Plone 4.3 as well as Plone 5. Uh, so we want, we want to get a uh, toolbar and the widgets out there so that you can try them out, uh, find the pain points, tell us where the issues are um, so that we can be ready for Plone 5. Uh, Plone 5, we're going to, to begin to remove things. Yes, so we're getting rid of, we're not getting rid of, but we're going to take all of Plone Core's uh, use of portal skins away. Um, we're going to empty it out. It'll still be there for your add-ons if you're using it. Uh, but we want to start to move things to browser views and really modernize what we're doing. Uh, this will allow us to actually test all those things, uh, like login, which has no tests at the moment and is really scary. It's really scary, it's really slow, and we're just going to put in a really simple solution that works for, let's say, 90% of cases, and if you have special requests, uh, special needs, um, you can, of course, replace them easily, but we're going for quick and easy for the large majority of sites and users. Right. Uh, Plum 5 is going to be even more secure. Uh, as Paul mentioned earlier, the security team is working on providing uh, built-in uh, CSRF, uh, cross-site request forgery uh, protection for Plone. So this will work with Plone Core and make sure that your add-ons are secure uh, right out of the box. Um, as I said, because we're moving things out of portal skins, we're going to have much better test coverage because we will have actual Python code to test instead of things that are just jammed into page templates. Um, so we'll have better unit testing for that. We have, because of, uh, because of mock-up and our widgets, we will have much better JavaScript practices. We are building something that is actually maintainable uh, JavaScript-wise. We have flat HTML files that we can run Selenium and robot tests against uh, so that we know that they always work. 
Uh, Plum 5 is going to be a lot faster. Uh, because we're removing the base theme and, and really paring down our templates and using Diazo for theming, uh, we're able to reduce the amount of processing that happens when you're uh, loading a page. And on top of that, we're adding Chameleon, uh, the rendering engine, which is going to uh, speed up response times by another 30%. And we're really hoping that Plum 5 is going to be a lot easier to learn. Um, because we're providing this separation between theming and uh, interactivity and the, uh, and the, and the Plone itself, uh, we're really hoping that it's easier to, to bring new developers up to speed. So you can bring in JavaScript develop developers who don't need to know Plone. They just need to know JavaScript. You can bring in designers who just need to know how to give you HTML and CSS. They don't need to know Plone. Uh, and we're making it easier for your content editors to actually edit content, um, the important things. Uh, Plone is really trying to go from using f having five different ways to do most things to having one way to do everything. Um, so we're going to move away from using skins, move to views. We're going to reduce our use of form libraries and just have one. Uh, <laughs> We're, we're moving to dexterity, we're moving to diazo out of the box. Uh, we're storing all our uh, settings instead of in uh, portal tools, we're moving them to the uh, configuration registry. So like I said, we're really trying to simplify this. We want to make sure that you're able to bring in a team uh, for as little money as possible that doesn't, they don't all have to know Plone. Uh, so it should be easier to train your staff on what they need to know. Uh, and kind of compartmentalize. And even if you're just alone in your organization, you can separate your concerns. On Monday, you can just do CSS. On Tuesday, you will be doing Python. And on Wednesday, you can deal with JavaScript if you want to. Now, it's really, it is not only for large teams, but also for smaller teams. It just makes it saner and you know where stuff goes and what there should be. And we're really also emphasizing um, that the new stuff only goes in when it's documented. Yes. Okay. So a little bit about the past year. Uh, Plone has been all over the world. We've been at representing, uh, represented at a lot of events. Um, here you see some, and it's really all over the world. Um, shall we try the timeline? Uh, yes. We have a very flashy timeline which requires internet access, which I don't have at the moment. Ooh, exciting, exciting. If I can actually get out of this, okay. It's an online timeline which is sort of a guarantee to go wrong because it's depending on internet access, which is always a gamble at conferences. Um, but if you see it on there, uh, are we? All right, I, I will post this on Twitter later, so uh, share it around. Yes, um, because but, but there you see that we have like events literally in almost all continents. Uh, I think Antarctica is still missing. I don't know what happened there. There are a few bases there. We should get plowed there. Um, but yeah, but these were just the events, and the sprints were really upped a lot last year. So. This is where we get things done for Plone. Um, over the past two years, we've averaged 12 uh, sprints a year, uh, so basically a sprint a month. This year, we had actually 18, uh, which is amazing. And we're hoping to get even more next year. But yeah, sprints are st still our best way of moving Plone along. Uh, they're also excellent fun to hold and to be at, but also actually great fun to organize. You get to hang out with funny people, Plone people from different countries and work on Plone in a smaller setting. So um, we hope to have more of them and the Plone Foundation will also try to help as much as possible in ha helping making those happen. Yeah, uh, so the reason we've, been, we've had so many this year is because the foundation has decided to put money towards sponsoring these things. Uh, and it's made it a lot easier for groups to say, yes, I actually want to try to do this. Um, previously, we'd have to find sponsors beforehand, find, make sure you had enough people coming, and now there's, there's the back, with the backing of the foundation, it's possible to say, all right, there's money there, we'll make sure this happens, um, and it's really kind of lowered the barrier to entry for uh, people who want to host a sprint. Uh, at, the, at the Barcelona sprint, uh, where we worked on testing, 
uh, it was it was great. Um, one of the sprinters uh, had been working with Plone for almost ten years, and she said, "Why haven't we done this before? I've learned so much in just this one week, uh, and it, it's 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 really great to see that." So these were the past ones, but we already have a few confirmed ones upcoming. First of all, in Jao Pessoa after the conference, uh, then in Arnhem, which most of you will be able to locate on the map since last year, uh, Cologne, uh, Barcelona, and San Francisco. But these are just the ones that are already confirmed, and we're hoping a lot more will turn up. So the effect that this has had on the, uh, the code base, uh, we've uh, had about 12,000 commits over the past year uh, to Plone Core, and that, that doesn't include all the add-ons. This is just Plone itself. Um, that's up 20% over last year. Um, and contributions, we've had uh, 270 different developers commit to Plone Core over the past year, uh, and that's up 12% over last year. Um, so at last year's conference, we had 70 people, uh, 70 different people contributing to Plone. Um, I think we can probably top that this year. Um, we had 20 new contributors there last year, so we had 20 people sign the contributors agreement. Uh, I'd love to see us beat that. That is a challenge, folk, that has been just put, put down. If you aren't a core contributor, uh, consider staying for the sprints and becoming one. It, all it takes is a simple signature. Yep, we will happily help you learn. Um, that's what sprints yes, are for. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, yeah, much of the sprints and also the other work that the Plone Foundation does uh, wouldn't be possible, first of all, without the Plone community. Without the Plone community, there is no point. But it also needs money. And for that, we have to do fundraising and we have to have sponsors. And sponsorship, well, we've started a new drive this year and sponsorship had fallen off. And luckily, it has begun already to pay off a little bit, as this graph will show you. Uh, this is 2013, and in the middle of 2013, Liz Leddy sort of kicked everybody around and started making phone calls. Thank you, Liz. And sponsor and Carol, uh, by the way, and uh, Carol Gantz. And sponsorship has gone up, which is great because then we can fund more sprints and more marketing and more cool stuff. So this is over this year you can really see where our two lovely ladies of money started kicking ass and yes we are hoping to have that line go up and up and up uh, because yes it does help to fund awesome stuff I think we're almost done so you've learned about Plone 5 really good stuff is coming um, app and it's going to come in the next year. This is not a vaporware promise. It will, be, it will come out in the next year, but it won't come out of nowhere. It comes out of the community. And therefore, we need all of you to help make it happen. Be it code, be it money, be it evangelizing, be it writing, be it writing awesome blog posts. We need all of you to make Plone 5 happen and to make it really awesome and to start conquering the world with it. Thank you all and have a great conference. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that timeline didn't work. We will tweet it. It looks quite impressive. <laughs>